afternoon, Nasik. Your city has empowered me. You won't believe it how. In the morning, at around 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. today, I saw athletes practicing for rowing. Can you believe it? I mean, it's incredible. In Nasik, I am. I see athletes practicing for rowing, which is not normal. It's phenomenal. So you can imagine, sports means a lot to me. Sports means everything. Today I'm speaking with you. One of the reasons is sports. Sports has changed my life I could not even imagine. Sports has transformed me. We always think of sports as happiness, joy. We think of sports gives us confidence. But sports has given me identity. It has transformed my life on another level. So sports, of course, means a lot to me. Can you imagine climbing a tree, jumping from a tree to the water well, swimming for a competition? These are my memories of sports. And I cherish them all the time. I'm sure all of you here all of you here, at one time you have played sports and you are just enjoyed the game of sports, right? That's human nature. We just play with the ball and we just go ahead and join the sporting movement. But also at the same time, we have also heard from our parents that, beta, study first and then I'll let you play. It is just, <laughs> it is just bizarre to me. It's, I don't know how people can put that logic, that study first, and then we'll let you play. I think play is in, in built in us. I would even think that sports is like magic. And athletes are magicians. So there is a jugalbandi of these two things. We are a country of 1.4 billion people. But in 2016 Olympics, we only had two medals. Two. Why is that? Why we are not playing sports? Is that the reason? Is our children are not playing sports? What are then our children doing? I would like to give you some hard facts, some scary facts about our nation, about our country. Our children, who we want to play them sports, they're not able to eat dinner. 60% of Indian children go to bed hungry stomach. 60%. That's a crazy number. 25% of world's child brides are in India. 25%. Almost close to the size of Germany. That's what we are living in right now. So 25% are child brides. 60% of the children are going to bed hungry stomach. And scarier than that is only 0.5% girls participate in any kind of sports or compete in sports. Only 0.5%. So how are we going to get those medals in the Olympics? First, we need to love the game of sports, right? So all these problems, all these challenges, up there you see girl is cutting a sugar cane. A lot of pain in it. We see child labor, we see poverty. Five years ago, I was traveling in a rural Maharashtra. I was traveling because I wanted to hear different stories. I wanted to speak to children. I wanted to speak to the last mile of our country. I wanted to understand their journeys, their stories. And just listen. I'm not there to give anyone advices. So I met students, I met children, I met teachers, I met government officers. I wanted to see a real rural India. So I traveled. At one of the rural Maharashtra's village, I came across a sugarcane field. In that sugarcane field, there was a small girl who was cutting a sugarcane. Sugarcane cutting is very crazy. I'll tell you how. When you are cutting a sugarcane, you have to be very careful because sugarcane leaves are spiky. They can cut your hands cut your body. The other thing is, when you're cutting sugarcane, you have to be very, very careful of venomous snakes. 
In India, we have vipers, crate, cobras. Most of the snake bites death happened in Maharashtra or on the sugarcane field. So if a 14, 13-year-old girl cutting a sugarcane from 8 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. in the evening, she has never been to school or in her entire life. At this age, I'm talking about 2015, not a long time ago. So when that is happening, a girl is going through a lot of challenges. But in the middle of the afternoon, in 40, 42 degrees Celsius, the same girl is playing with the ball. Ball which is made of clothes in Marathi called chindi. You know what she's playing? Simple game. Everyone has probably played here. Dodgeball. She's playing dodgeball with her friends. Now, this girl, who has never been to school, who is cutting sugar can, she might not even see her 15th birthday if she gets bitten by a snake. After all this, her name is Nakusa. Nakusa means unwanted child. It literally gives me a goosebump because that is so crazy. We are thinking about a developed country, we are thinking about all this, we still have our daughters, our sisters, our children, whose names are Nakusa, unwanted child. But after all this, there is that one magic which happens, which is sports. You know, for those 15 to 20 minutes, Nakusa is the happiest person. And that changed my view to look at things. I realize this is a magic which is transforming people on a different level. You know, how do I get to go to this rural India? How do I go to meet Nakusa? I am something similar to that village landscape. I grew up in a village called Maswad. I went to Marathi medium school. My school had four rooms for 10 standards. Jilla Parishad school, government school. In my school, we were doing earn and learn program. It's not some kind of innovative thing. Now in Mumbai and other cities, you'll see Oh, on, get to know your earth, get to know your farmland, and all that kind of stuff. But that time, it was we had because we didn't have a grant for school. So we had to do work in the farmland. We picked up cotton, we were cutting sugarcane, cutting corn, and we'll have our teacher standing far away with a big stick while we are cutting cotton, uh, picking, up, picking up cotton. It was crazy. We used to, you know, children are naughty, so what we used to do is, we used to throw beehives on our teachers and run away. That was fun for us because we didn't, we're not introduced to any kind of organized sports. So what I used to do is, I used to jump in a water well. I used to find a tree so we can, the distance of water well increases and we dive in. I used to climb trees to get beehives. I used to swim lakes to catch ducks. Three to four kilometers from my house, we used to have hyenas. All that happened. Suddenly, one day my life changed. I went to US for my high school education. Now, here, I am swimming not for catching ducks. I am swimming for competitions. I'm climbing not for getting beehives. I'm climbing for a competition. So sports just kicked into me. And I realized that sports is a lot more. It's about confidence. It's about self-esteem. It's about giving yourself identity. A lot of different things. At the 2018 draft, the NBA draft, why the picture is there? Because I became a sports agent in the US. I used to hire athletes. I did endorsement deals with the athletes. It was incredible. I loved my job. Why would not someone love it? It's just amazing. You're traveling with the athletes. I used to earn a lot of money in the US, traveling in the private jets with the athletes. Who would like to leave that job, right? That should be a craziest person to do that. But in a way, I am a little bit crazy. So I did that. I left my job. Other thing I left my job for, in back of my mind, I always had, there is this small Prabhat, there is this young Prabhat, who used to do all that in the villages, and there are millions and thousands of Prabhat who are running barefoot. I should do something about it. I left the US, I went back to my village, I started a program called Mandeshi Champions. These Mandeshi Champions athletes, these young girls I see around, you know, we are in a, this small bubble. If you go outside, we'll see a lot of people who have influenced us, 
who have a huge impact on us. So these Mandishi Champions athletes, they have a huge impact on me. With Mandishi Champions athletes, these are my teachers. These are, these are my real heroes. Let me introduce you to my first teacher, Sarita Bisse. Sarita was a shepherd. She born in a shepherd family. She would walk 300 kilometers in a year. She would walk 300 kilometers in a year with the folk of sheep. Her job was to make sure sheep don't get eaten by wolves. Can you believe it? Charita knew how to track wolves. Who does that? Who would know how to track wolves? Today, Sarita Bhise came to Mandeshi Champions program. She's the captain of Maharashtra's field hockey team. And that is the real transformation. That is the real sports transformation. Let me introduce you to my other teacher, Reshma Kevde. Reshma is the fifth daughter in the family. Her father did, wanted to have a son. So he had, she had the four elder sisters. Of course, being a fifth daughter, you get neglected all the time. Reshma, after school, she used to herd buffaloes. She, heard, she herded buffaloes. She loved that, climbing trees, herding buffaloes. Why would not someone love it? Today, the same Reshma, Reshma Kevte, is running marathons. International marathon, she came second in Pune International Marathon. She has gone to San Francisco. She has won Virginia State Championship. She travels around the globe without saying a single word of English. That is the real transformation. That what sports can do to you. Let me introduce you to my third teacher, Nikita. Nikita gave me one deeper insight. Nikita said that I learned swimming because my mother told me that if you do not learn swimming, when you get married, your mother-in-law will throw you in a water well and you'll drown. We are talking about 2020. This happened two weeks ago. Can you believe this, that someone in India is learning swimming like that? How did I meet Nikita? Nikita is our youth development center program. There's an athlete named Namrata Tandre. Namrata was the state champion for cross country. She, didn't do her, she couldn't do her career after that. So she said, Dada, I want to become a police officer, otherwise I'll get married at the age of 18. Namrata became a police constable. She came to me. She said that, you know, three things change in my life. I'm the first police constable from my village, woman police constable from my village. Guys, this is a huge thing for someone who was about to get married to. The second thing, she can make her own decision. And third, she has choice to select who does she wants to get married to out of 11 people. Her sisters were put in the marriage without asking. Didn't know who they're going to marry to. Just that financial inclusion, financial independence can change your life, can change a lot of different things. Today, Mandeshi Champions works with 8,000 children. We have athletes, three athletes representing for India. And who are these? Shepherds, sugarcane cutters. We have over 50 national athletes, 100 state and district level athletes. Just like Nikita, just like Namrata, we have 400 girls who are become, going to become a police officer. And 40 of them already have become a police officer. So that's my journey. And these people, these incredible girls have inspired me. You know, Reshma, Sarita, they're representing for India. When they come back, they do the household work. They do farm work. Who does that? A guy would ever able to do that? I literally doubt. So these are my superwomen. Thank you so much.